I got to clear my throat over here. Coco in the building. Coco, the pole dancer. Trucker extraordinaire. Man. Well, thank you once again for sitting down with me and having a conversation, man. What you, what you, what you been into as of late? Uh, well, as of lately, I've been working a lot. I'm back OTR with a mega company. So, yay. <laughs> we'll just say yay. All right. So the, the, the last time we, uh, the last time we spoke, uh, I, I think you was, what, lease purchasing or lease leasing? What, what was the deal and what yeah. happened? Oh, okay. So. The last straw with them was my last check before I quit was $700. That's literally all I had made like that week because they had such a high overhead that it was no way for me to, for me to win out of this situation. All the people that was winning was them because they was getting a minimum of $2,200 a week from me. So basically, I needed to make twenty two hundred plus a week as a lease purchase driver, and it was really hard. I'm not even gonna lie to you, because rates was was trash. Okay, so let me get this straight. So your your expenses for everything, including the truck, was you was you lease purchasing or was you leasing? I was lease purchasing. And uh, for insurance and trailer, tra uh, insurance and trailer, and a uh, truck note, and all of these other little fees that they tacked on to the back of was twenty two hundred a week. That's not including tolls and fuel. So what's what's the gross total altogether, including tolls and fuel? So you say it depends on where you go. So give me a ballpark of 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 an average settlement that would include the 2200 plus nothing hell yeah got about 200 dollars huh deep up i got about 200 dollars okay here's go one uh west memphis arkansas to waco texas 514 miles world pay two thousand dollars i got 85 percent of it which left me with 1700 um I don't think I okay. I got fuel in Palestine, Arkansas, which two fifty three, and then I got fuel in Van, Texas, two eighty. In death, um, I got a lot of fuel charges on here. What in the hell? Uh, Utah, Alabama. Oh, this is for the week. Okay, so this ain't just the West Memphis, Arkansas, the Waco, Texas, this Desoto, Texas. To Robert, Louisiana, and then Columbia, Mississippi, to Forest Park, Georgia, Gainesville, Georgia, to Terrell, Texas. So basically, my net, what was my net? My net was $4,533. And my deduction was $1,705.95. And and somehow it ended up being five hundred and twenty-four dollars that they gave me. So you only took home out of four thousand dollars. Five hundred dollars. Yep. Out of four thousand dollars, you took home. Five hundred dollars. Five hundred twenty-four dollars. They didn't give you no type of fuel discount, no fuel surcharge, or anything I like that. I was getting no. They didn't give me any fuel surcharges. And I didn't know all of that until I was in orientation. All right, so no fuel surcharge, no fuel discount. So every fuel no. that you get is your responsibility, which you had to pay back. So meaning that you had to be like, like real budgeting as far as the fuel that you get from each place that you go, right? Yep. And I was still kind of new to that because, you know, I think back then I, I really haven't been driving that long. I think probably like maybe a year or something like that. So I didn't really know what I was doing. 
either. That's honesty. Okay. That's that's fair. That's that's a fair. That's fair and honest. That's all that's all the people can even ask for. Because a lot of people that get in into um leasing and get into stuff like that, they really don't know. Or they just jump mm-hmm. into it because they think they can make all of this money and 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 buy them a truck. You see what I'm saying? They, they try to take the the I'm not saying that you, but people is just trying to take the shortcut way of of trying to own a truck and everything without knowing the business side of the truck, if that makes any sense, right? Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah. So it makes sense. All right, so you figure <laughs> you figure no. <laughs> You you figure no five hundred dollars a week is is not cutting it for you. I mean that was the lowest one I made. I mean it, it was times where I made like eighteen, two thousand, but it was like when I really started trying to get the hang of putting enough fuel in to make it there. But the way I the way I saw it was like as long as I had fuel, I felt like I was fine because I did not want to be on the side of the road with the maniacs. So yeah, I, I was I was overfueling tremendously. Yeah, a lot of a lot of the old schoolers would would tell you to be mindful of of fueling. Like if you if you were a good company, and I'm I'm saying if you were a good leasing company that would treat you well and make sure that you get the money that you need to not only make a profit, you would be able to. Uh, budget your fuel you'll be able to figure out uh through the mud flap app or any other type of apps that will help you with fuel discounts and stuff like that and you'll figure which state or which state that you go to will have the cheapest fuel versus being the driving with a mega carrier and you just willy-nilly go to pilot flying J loves or whatever whatever fuel stops that they authorize you to go to and you just and forget about it and just get back in the truck and go but now that you're responsible for the fuel then that's where the mindful comes into play like okay i i know when i was a uh, a uh, mega carrier hell one thousand dollars they they paying that but now when it's you you got to figure out like hmm yeah one thousand dollars is a bit much where can i where can i cut that in half or or 75 (laughs) percent you see what i'm saying or you figure you figure you get a load that's like maybe this load is only 500 miles maybe i might just need to put X amount of dollars in the fuel because your fuel, your fuel on the truck to me is going to be your biggest spends right there. And that's where a lot of people that, uh, that will come into leasing from the company side, that's where they get messed up at because when they jump in, they, they jump in the truck, they still got that company mindset and they thinking that, Oh, okay, well, I'm just going to go to flying J fuel up my truck all right i get down to a half a half a tank i'm going to go to i'm going to go to pilot fill up my truck all right i'm i'm down to a half a tank again or down to a quarter of a tank i'm going to go to uh i'm going to go to loves fill up my truck so you figure flying j was a thousand uh pilot was maybe like 600 and then loves is about another thousand or so and if you're not getting no discounts on that you paying the pump price so when you get the thing was they was getting discounts because we could only go to pilot and petrol no petrol yeah pilot petrol and um ta were the only ones that their fuel cars to work at so in order for you to tell us where we can only go you're getting some kind of discount, right? Right. They had to because if they... So why aren't y'all passing it on to On us? to you guys. Right. That's, that's, that's a very good question, and I think that's a, 
I think that's a good question to start asking now that you're a little bit more experienced, just in case you decide to jump back into leasing. Those are now questions that you can ask and be like, oh, okay, well, well, loves, that's all we can go to? Okay. So you're getting, a, loves is giving you a discount to come and fuel with them. Why not pass that on to us? Is is that mm-hmm. happening? Find out about that. Those are those those are questions that you should have written down now. That next time, if you decide, hmm, maybe I'll I'll do this over the road thing for a year, just just to get back up on my feet to get back right, and then yeah. I would I would I would give leasing another shot. I thought about it, but I I think I want to do. Um I don't know if you heard about it. I've been looking into doing drive away. And um, there's one particular company. It's hard to find a lot of info on it, like on uh, TikTok and Instagram and uh, YouTube. Uh, it's called Norton Transport. They uh, do drive away. And they give you a fuel surcharge. They give you a... Uh, I guess it would be like per diem when they give you a little extra money for like food, hotels, and um, travel, because you got to travel to get to them. And um, I think they said 70 cent a mile, and then after all the stuff they give you, it'll go up to like a dollar and five cents or something like that a mile. I don't know. I got to ask the questions again. Yeah, drive away, that's not a bad, that's not a bad thing, but you'll... They they'll they'll dispatch you out. Or you either fly. It's self dispatch. Oh, self dispatch. Well, yeah, that. They. Yeah. I'm gonna say they got a load board. Oh, okay. So you can go and pick up pick up whatever you want to pick up, and with drive away, you can pretty much pick up anything. You can pick up an RV. You can pick up a bus. You can pick up a semi. Hell, I've seen people pick up boats. <laughs> oh God. Dude, so, if you can move, I I'll pick it up for you. Yeah. All right. So you decided to uh to to jump back OTR. Um how long have you been driving since you made the move back to a mega carrier? And why did you choose a mega carrier to go with versus uh maybe a smaller mom and pop company that you could make some a decent wage? Okay, well, I'm going to tell you the story about this company that I'm with now. I've been with this company since I had four years of experience. Actually, when I went to MDR, I left this company to try out lease purchasing, and they welcomed me back, like, with open arms. After I, after I was like, oh, that's a fail. I don't want to do this no more. It was like, well, you can come back. You ain't even got to go through um, orientation no more. Just come to work. All right, cool. So I come back. And um, I was local for a while. And next thing you know, Swift bought us out. And Swift making a lot of cuts to a lot of stuff. And they're cutting uh, the they're cutting the local team by like over half. I think when I was there, it was like twelve. I think now it's like four, four locals. They have four night locals now, all because Swift made them you know, cut people in half or whatever. So there was like either you come OTR or they got to let you go. But luckily I chose to come OTR before they started making the cut anyway. And um, honestly, to be honest with you, it is a mega carrier, but I've never had anybody look out for me as much as this company has. Swift, I've been to Swift, I've been to, I did MGR and this, and they're the only ones that actually, you know, helped me make money. I told them that I wasn't comfortable with what I wasn't being, well, I told them I wasn't comfortable with what I was getting paid because there were people coming in after me and I've been with this company, not consecutive, but on and off for two years. Still, I've been here for two years. Um, the people that are coming in after me, making more than me, people coming in with less experience than me, making more than me. And I 
brought that to my terminal manager's attention. And a week later, I had a raise. I told him, oh, I need more miles. I want more miles because I want to start making bonus. Every load I get, or not every, but I'm going to say 85% of the loads I get be 900 plus, 900 plus miles a load. So they're giving me my miles and they're giving me my pay now. So why not? Plus these mom and pop uh, companies, a lot of them, they want you to have, you, they want you to be able to drive a manual and I can't drive a manual. So that's out for me in a way. Coco, I came across um, one of your TikToks. Um, I'm not sure if that was like a story time or something happened, but I think in the caption it was saying something like, "You you got into it with females at a truck stop." No, I was on TikTok. I was on TikTok, and I got on um. Me being a supportive person, I got on another female driver's live, and she was she's a, a known influencer. I'm not going to say her name. I'm not going to put her out there. But I got on her live. She was, you know, talking to other drivers. And they just kept, like, they were naming all of the trucks that were going by. And this is all I said to this lady. I said, like, first of all, I made con um, conversation. I was like, hey, how y'all doing? Everybody OTR? Oh, oh, that's cool. And then they start naming like trucking companies. I said, I heard Western Express was a bad company. And they was like, oh, stop. Uh, what they say? Oh, stop. Uh, not too much on Western Express, blah, blah, blah. I said, I'm just saying every time I heard a story about Western Express, it was never a good story. It never ended well for a female driver. Every bad story that I've heard about Western Express was about something terrible happening to a female driver. And she was like, oh, well, not too much on it, da 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 da, da. And then they started, like, making fun of me, talking about something. Oh, that's not even how you spell Coco, because I spell my name K-O-K-O. -K -O. And I'm like, what? what? Like, what is our problem? And um, this guy, asked, he was like, oh, it's like, I work at ATB. What do you work? I said, oh, I work for TTMS. And she was like, oh, S-T-T-M-S. I said, hold on, what? And then it was like, you can really leave. You're being negative. How am I being negative by asking a question? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't get why y'all so mad. We're not mad. We're not mad. Y'all obviously mad. Okay, whatever, Felony Express. And then they got real mad about that. Like, I go, I come on here to support female, you know, influencers and drivers, and I get the, the short end of the stick. I wanted to say a lot more, but I got violations on TikTok and one more and I'm going to get banned. So. Western Express, Felony Express. <laughs> well, I mean, not, not to say anything bad about Western Express. I mean, I, I get the, I, I get the same, uh, the same info it's good the company is good and bad i mean it's it's good for people that don't have a, a particularly good background uh it's good for people that don't have the experience uh it's good for sap drivers that that's in mm -hmm. the sap program is 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 and and of course it's good for felonies uh felons because it's a it's a felon friendly company. They you you going to come to you uh uh Western Express, but you got to understand when you get there, don't expect them to treat you with the red carpet. Now, and they, they, they gonna give you mediocre pay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't I'm don't expect right. Don't don't expect that you're gonna go in the door thinking you're gonna make. Uh, uh, a thousand, two thousand, three thousand dollars a week. You're not gonna. That that's not gonna happen. See, the way they figure it is, you need them. They don't need you. For every, mm -hmm. for every one driver that they let go, they got ten more drivers waiting. So 
That's how they feel. They they feel that you the one is messed up. You the one that that can't find a job, and we're the only ones that's that's going to give you the opportunity. You either t- you either take it or leave it. So that being said, why are y'all mad when you know what your company about? You know your company is bottom of the barrel. You know they only bringing you in the door paying 40 something a mile. And you got four or five years of experience and you taking it? Oh, okay. I guess you just got to understand that a lot of people that works for these companies, they, they, really, they really think that the company is doing something for them. Hey, I was down and out. I, I was on my last leg. Prime, Swift, even Swift wouldn't take me. And the only people that took me that I'm going to give my loyalty to is Western Express. So yeah. I guess that's how they feel about that when other people come in and be like, yeah, Western yeah, Express but sucks. I ain't got no sympathy that. for nobody. I have no sympathy for somebody who went out here and deliberately messed up their life and their video by doing dumb stuff. So I have no sympathy for people like that. I'm sorry. Because you are an adult and you knew what you were doing when you did it. Sorry. I'm not sorry. So like, I'll go into somebody's live. I'll get them. I'll, you know, speak positivity. Like, right after that happened, I went to another female driver's live. And, you know, we just, everything we spoke about was positive. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, girl, like, oh, you look cute today. Da, 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 da. How do you like your job? Blah, blah, blah. You, you know, being positive. But you just go in there and it's a whole bunch of negativity and project chick behavior. But we ain't. I'm not trying to be around. Yeah, try try not yeah. to bring that down. Try not to let that bring you down, man. If you got a positive energy, a positive vibes, and you feel that somebody's uh, not being being good vibes around you. You you don't need to be around who you are. They don't yeah. they don't know you you. What what your what your intentions was? It wasn't like that you went in there and tried to start some shit. But you was just being totally honest. Everything you heard about said company is hasn't hasn't been a good look. And that's all I'm saying. I what works. See, what people need to understand, what works for you works for you. It may not work for everybody else. I got I got people that's coming over to my platform talking about their uh, their experience with controversial company Super Eagle all the time. But then I got people in the comments that's over here saying, oh, well, they capping, they messed up, this, that, and the third. I'm making money and all like they like it. And I'm like, well, what works for you works for you. Maybe you got that good fleet manager. You you got that good truck that never breaks down. You got that good trailer that that never needs repair. But so, you know, some of this stuff that that they that people got that are having positive experiences with these companies. Everything that I have at this company, I asked for. I told them I wasn't going on the road unless they give me a brand new truck. I told them I wasn't going on the road unless they gave me a particular dispatcher. And they did all of that for me. They accommodated me. And I, I'm enjoying my experience. But I want to be home more. I'm not going to lie. I kind of want to go back local. But Now, see, that's your, now, now, see, now what you just said, what well, everything works out for you, that's your experience. Now, somebody else that's, mm-hmm. that's there may not have the same experience as you. They probably got a messed up truck. They probably got a messed up fleet manager. They probably come on there and badmouth the company even more. And then that has you thinking like, well, that's not happening to me. That's that's not happening to me. Well, the reason why it's not happening to you is because your experience differs from everybody else. So that's yeah. what's up. That is what's up, man. All right, so so you still TikToking over there? You um, you still pole dancing? What's 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 the deal, yo? Um, 
I only do it for exercise every now and then when I'm home, when I have time. Because it's, I mean, it's more than just, you know, being a stripper or whatever. It's, I have a pole at home. Pole dancing is art. And it's also good for you. It's, you know, good cardio and good muscle and strength training. And that's what I use it for. And plus it's fun. You, you, um, I believe the last time we spoke, you, your, your relationship status is married, right? Yes. You still married? Yes, I am. Is your, is your husband a trucker? Um, he actually is now. He wasn't at first, but he is now. Oh, okay. How, how does, um, how does the pole dancing intertwines with the relationship? I mean, I do it at home. He bought me the pole. Like I said, I only use it as, um, like, strength training and exercise. I have a pole at home. It's in our living room. He bought it for me. And every now and then when I have a little, you know, spare time, I play on my pole. I'm, some that's, I'm, I'm sure that's a visual delight for your husband. <laughs> that's if he's around. I'm not going to lie, I tend to do it when he's not there. That way I can actually get an exercise in. Because he'll just be staring at me and make me fall off the pole or something. What? Oh, I'm, I'm going to have to be there for, for an audience. I'm going to have to be there to toss some ones on you. Hey, I go, get, go I ahead. get nervous. <laughs> don't, don't be nervous, nervous around me. I'm your husband. Don't be nervous around me. Here you go. Yeah, go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm getting nervous. Like, get out. I'm trying to exercise. <laughs> you say get, get out. Get out. Get out. <laughs> uh, all right. So I, I do want to, I, I, before I, um, I let you go, and I, I do appreciate you coming back to sit down with me, man. I, I'm always uh, intrigued with my, with my past guests and catch up with you guys. Uh, since the last time we talked, I think the last time we talked was maybe about a year ago, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it probably was about a year ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So TikTok, um, as you already know, I'm not a fan of TikTok. A lot of things uh, controversially has happened throughout the app. Um, I made a video about the female getting hit with the brick and come to find out. Well, we still don't know the actual truth behind that situation. I always think of it as it's, it was a production. I think it was a production because it's a lot of filters that, that TikTok offers now that makes you look some kind of way. And I, I, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know. But uh, that, that controversy right there. And now there's... There's two more controversies that's out right now, and I want to get your opinion on it. Um, there was a video that's going viral. Well, two videos that's going viral. The one video shows this young lady going on a on what was supposed to be a drink date, and she the oysters. Yeah, she got all them oysters and 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 slurping and just making herself look she like she got what she deserved. Yeah, um, she did all that extra stuff and got mad when brother man skipped out on the bill or skipped out on her and left her the she bill. Did right. What? She what? Did right. What's what? What's your feelings on that? I feel like he did the right thing, and I feel like she got everything she deserved. First of all, you went on that date, not even trying to get to know this man. You went on that date to get a free meal. That is exactly, that was your intention, to go on that date and get a free meal and maybe some free drinks, and all you got was played, and you still had to pay. So she got exactly what she want, what she deserved, not what she wanted, but what she deserved. Well, I agree with the dude. I want to see who the dude is, though. But I agree with the dude. Coco, it's, I mean, do, I mean, are, it, it's it's crazy. I'm 55 years old. I, I'm I'm not privy to the modern dating thing. But 
is that a thing now? Like, if the female isn't into me and she just want to take advantage of me, would, would that happen to me? Oh, what you talking about, them buying 48 oysters? Yeah, like, I'm, I'm bringing you, I, I don't have a problem. I If I say I'm going to treat you to dinner, I'm going to treat you to dinner. If I'm saying, yo, let's go for a drink date and I'll, I'll buy the drinks and all like that, maybe, maybe an appetizer? I, I can understand <laughs> an appetizer, some wings or something like that. But you, 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 nice, you going overboard. Should I, should I inspect that from women now? Um, these new women probably, because they don't care about nothing but ski and take them dreads. So yeah, I would say yeah. Should I, should I start watching out for women that's that that breaks out the camera as well? Should I start watching out for them? If a woman is on a date with you, there should be no reason for her to be, firstly, especially if it's a first date, there's no reason for her to be filming that first date. Y'all are on that date to get to know each other. So why are you TikToking and Instagram and everything that happens with us? You should look out with a woman like that anyway, because a person that films everything is going to put y'all business on the Internet. Facts. Facts. All right, I, I want your opinion on the other viral video that's that's going around right now. And the dude, hey, he's my hero. So of course, the female, not, not, I, hey, nothing wrong with the female. It, nothing wrong. She was cute, body, little plus size body, but she was still cute. And she she called the dude out by uh, by saying that he took a person like her to the Cheesecake Factory. And I, I I wanted to come back and say, uh, I wanted to come back and say, yeah, I've seen a whole bunch of women that looks like you at the Cheesecake Factory. But what her her interpretation of looking like her means she's all dialed up, she's cute and everything. But my interpretation was I, I've seen a whole bunch of black women at 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 the Cheesecake Factory. I'm I'm just saying. But um Was it a first date? I believe this was a first date. Uh, the young man, uh, he was he was he was a gentleman. He got out. They pulled up to the cheesecake factory. She broke out her phone, and um, he got out. He said, "Well, let me get out. Let me go and open the door." And I think she locked the door. Like she locked the door and mm -hmm. rose down the window. When he came to the door, he, she rose down the window, and dude was like, "Can you unlock the door so I can?" And she was like, well, I am here at the Cheesecake Factory, y'all. Who brings a person that looks like me to the Cheesecake Factory? I'm like, and the dude, nice guy. Oh, he, he wasn't no, he, he I wasn't. I would have took her home. Yeah, he did just that. Um, he got back in the car with her. They talked. They was going, having a back and forth, having a dialogue. And, uh. And yeah, at, at the end of the dialogue, he was like, well, look, um, I'm about to take you back home. And she was flabbergasted. She was like, wait, we, you about to take me back home? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. She was like, is there any, you, we, we can't go nowhere else? He was like, no, he had a problem with the Cheesecake Factory. I, I, I don't think me and you going to be a good fit. I mean, if you're having a problem with the Cheesecake Factory, then what other problems I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna look forward to? If I take you to see a Denzel Washington movie, you you're not gonna get out of the car because you don't like Denzel Washington? Well, I mean, I I, I can't trying to communicate and say, oh, I simply do not like the Cheesecake Factory. Do we have any other options? Or was it because she felt like Cheesecake Factory was cheap? Because me personally, I don't go to the Cheesecake Factory. Cause I don't like nothing there but their cheesecake. Everything else is nasty, so I wouldn't even want to go there. So, if it's food related, I can understand. Well, you would express that. Um, you would express that, but she expressed the fact that it was a chain restaurant, like, uh, like Applebee's, Olive Garden, uh, Red Lobster. Think that she she's not used to anything 
she feels she like women nowadays are expecting way too much from a first date. Way too much. Um, my first date with my now husband, we went to Applebee's. And I enjoy every moment of that at Applebee's. And after Applebee's came Capitol Grill, um, restaurants I've never heard of before in my life. Um, what's it called? Um, unexpected reservations to places I've never been before. Trips to different cities, cabin trips. Like you, y'all expect too much out of a first date. Get to know that man first. It don't matter if it's at Applebee's or at their house eating ramen noodles, watching a, a scary movie. I do stuff like that. That sounds fun to me. Man, listen. My first date with my with my ex-wife. I met her at the mall. Randall Park Mall. I'll never forget Randall Park Mall. That's that was the spot. Our first date was in the arcade. This was back in the 80s. This when arcades was a thing. Malls was a thing back then. No cell phones, no Facebook, no TikTok, no running to running to uh running to TikTok or making TikTok videos about my date and all like that. No. No, back in the 80s when time was great, Reaganomics. <laughs> Reaganomics. Uh our first date was at the arcade. Went to the arcade. Then I took her to then I then I took walked her to work because she worked at the worked at the restaurant that was in the mall. I came back, picked her up. I had friends in the car. Like I have I have my boys in the car and all like that. We boys. We just joy riding and shit. I told him I was like, yo, I gotta go and pick up my girlfriend. Oh man, why you gotta do it? Uh, hey, 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 hey. Now the number fifteen takes you straight to downtown, and you can get on the number one to get home. The choice is yours. Oh man, you, you, you going? I thought we. It's the bro code. No, 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 no. She got front seat, so get your asses in the back. <laughs> Lord. But uh, but yeah, it, it, but now. The modern age of 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 social media now, man. I I I I I I don't know. I I don't know. I I guess I'm just too old because I I can't I can't fade females that 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 you meet on like TikTok or something like that because you got a whole water full of guys just jotting for your position on TikTok. And yeah. I just feel that if I'm the lucky one, you know, we, we go on a date and the date just don't work out or whatever, whatever. Next thing you're gonna be on blast. Yeah, this this dude took me over to the took me over to the uh red lobster. And that's a, gr why a girl that looks a girl that women. looks like me at red lobster, y'all. Yeah. And that's why they're gonna be forever single. Forever single ain't gonna be good for nothing but a baby mama. Oh, don't let they me. They gotta learn to be humble. Oh my God, that's a whole nother conversation. I, I don't even think we got time for that, uh, Coco. <laughs> I don't even think we got time for that. Hey, listen, I I do appreciate it very much. I know that you're a little bit busy out there and all like that. But before we get on up out of here, I want to hit you with a, I want to hit you with a trivia uh, brought to you by Lyrically Correct a music trivia game of 90s and 2000 hip hop. I got a I got a question for you. When right. when Soldier Boy hopped out of bed, what did he turn on? He turned his swag on. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, let me make sure. Hold on, let me let me get the let me get the right one. Is that it? <laughs> All right. All right. Let's see if you can get this one. What time did Tweet get home last night? A, four forty-five p.m. Uh, B, 
around a quarter to three. See, a quarter to three. A qu- <laughs> <laughs> I was singing it in my head. Oh. Oh, a quarter to three. All right. And the last one, let's just see if this one. Who? That that's it. That's the question. Who? 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 Yeah, I, I, I lost this man. I have no idea. Mike <laughs> Jones. Who? Mike oh Jones. Oh my God! Who? <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, I really, again, I do appreciate you being here with me, man. I, I really enjoyed the conversation, as always. Uh, and we will always have a good time, man. I really do appreciate you. All right, thank you so much for having me. You're very welcome. Big cheese got it locked. Boy. Don't you love me all night?